Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Com Report. Wherever you get your podcast, you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And of course, you can always read my work on ESPN.com. I'll have a story up Friday. A lot of you guys already know this pain, so bear, bear with me. This is as much for to a national audience explaining what this quarterback situation has been like the last five years, the resources they've invested into it, the number of players who played the position, and why and why and how they're hopeful that this year with Sam Howell, that that streak or that quest finally ends at least for a few years. Anyway, that'll be up. It should be should be up on ESPN.com on Friday. So, and also stay tuned at the end of this for a little short interview with rookie defensive end Andre Jones. Talked a little bit about just what he's been able to show in training camp. Also asked him about his Dream Chasers tattoo and why he has that, when he got it, what it means to him. And so I think it kind of explains his mindset. And there's also, I think it was a pretty cool, uh, some moments there talking to him about what it means to him to be in this position and what it means to many other people for him to be in this position, which is why it goes back to that dream chasers tattoo. Anyway, stay tuned for that. Just give me about, about 10 minutes or so. And then we'll get to the, to the audio interview with, with Andre Jones. Again, he's a guy that has certainly opened up some eyes this summer. And again, I just told you before, if I'm putting in the 53 together, he's on my, he's on there. He's a a guy who's got some pass rush skills. You don't let those guys go free. And I told you before, that the reason Shaka Tony made it a couple of years ago was because of wasn't just, well, it was the, the separator was one move he made against Baltimore in the preseason finale. And it was a little bit of a, wasn't, it was kind of a spin move, but it was a move that people here said other guys just can't make. So that's why they kept him. See if you develop, but it's a pass rush traits that you saw and you see that with Jones and you've seen it with him all along and you see the length and I told you about the length talked a lot about this yesterday for my practice report anyway let's get to some injury updates because as we get closer to the season these are a bigger deal so let's start with Chase Young he's going to go see a doctor on Friday to determine the next course of action he's got that stinger he has been out participating in full team work for the last two days now no pads a lot of just um, preparation for getting ready for the game formations um, and, 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 you know, going over some team stuff again, he's not going to play in the game and neither is a lot of the other defensive, not the defensive starters wouldn't, but they have to go over some stuff to get ready. Not just obviously not for the game, but just stuff they're installing and seeing it against different looks, et cetera. There is some prep work for the game just to get guys together. But anyways, so with, with chase, it's about the doctor's appointment tomorrow to see if you can get, be cleared for contact and get back so they can get, you know, to get them ready for the regular season. No update on Terry McLaurin. Uh, Dax Milne did not practice yesterday because of a groin injury that Revere called a minor setback. He was out there running around today. Uh, Tress Way has the lower back soreness. He will punt on on Saturday, so it'll be the first time this preseason that he would get some work in a game. We clearly know what the guy can do. You have to take make sure with your Pro Bowl punter that you take care of him in that back because he is an absolute weapon for them. Kendall Fuller has a sore knee. That This is the first time we've really known what it is, but he has a sore knee. They ha- he had some swelling on it, so they pretty much shut him down. It's the reason why he didn't play against Cleveland, and part of that was I think he was going to play, and then after the long delay, after warming up and you get a long delay, they didn't want – they you know I think they there was – I don't know if there was some soreness there, but they decided it would be better just to shut him down for that game. So we haven't seen a lot of him over the last couple weeks. The good thing is for them, he knows what he's doing in this defense. They know what he can do in this defense. And he he has a a good role with here, good role here with this defense. So if anybody on that secondary is going to miss a few weeks, he's the guy because he's very smart. He'll be prepared. And, you know, you just, for their sake, you have to hope that this knee does not become an issue during the season, which is why you've got to take care of it now as much as you can. Um, Charles Leno, Logan Thomas worked on the side field. So again, Thomas continues to progress from that. He's going to be such a huge part of this offense and he has to be, I know there's excitement or some, you know, positive feelings, obviously toward Cole Turner, Logan Thomas is still the best patch bat, pass catching tight end they have, especially in certain areas, red zone. Uh, you can, he, he's just, he's just, just bigger, 
He's just a big, strong guy. And while Cole Turner has the height, Logan has the size. So I think he just adds something because of that. And his, he's, you know, he is a good athlete having played quarterback. So you want him out there. Um, you know, can they keep four tight ends with Curtis Hodges? I don't know. I don't know that Hodges has shown enough to warrant a roster spot, but we shall see. Anyway, a good, good progression there for uh, Thomas. Curious to see how they handle Saturday night. Who plays? I certainly, Sam Howell is not going to play. Jacoby Brissett has been working with other, with the members of the starting offensive line to get ready for this game. So I don't know if they're, we don't know yet who's going to play. Rivera will talk about that on Friday. But if, you know, but again, Jacoby's gotten a lot of work behind that starting line. That starting line needs more time together. They need more reps. And that's one of the things that Nick Gates has talked about a couple of times when you go back to the Ravens joint practices, the three things he said they needed were reps, reps, reps. So this is another chance to get it. And I don't care who they're working against. It's not about like, oh, well, they're not facing the starters. It's about they just need time together facing live competition from another team. So they can get good work out of it if they indeed do play just because of that. Now, I would expect, I don't think you're going to see certainly a lot of offensive stars, but I wouldn't be surprised if you have the line in there just to get them some time together. And, you know, again, I told you yesterday, there's little things that when I was talking to Nick Gates the other day about this, like little things that you have to learn is how do you, you know, if you're going to have a double team block with this guard, at what point can I let off and, and still get to the linebacker? At what point is this guy comfortable with me peeling off the double team to go do this? Just the communication aspect. But some of those are very, very subtle. So you definitely need work in those areas. So that, that'll be something to watch. And again, if they play, it's because they just need the reps. The Ricky Stromberg train is gathering some momentum. Stromberg continues to be a guy that has played, has had a good camp. And he's, to me, he progressively has gotten better. And it's funny because early in camp, there's some talk you'd hear some maybe, you know, whis not whispers, but you'd hear a little bit like, oh, does he have the strength? Well, a lot of it is, and I actually talked to him about this after practice today too. And you can see it on film. A lot of it is, it's really about lower body strength when you're trying to anchor. And that's what he's, I think that was one of the little adjustments that he's had to make is just getting used to anchoring against guys of this caliber and strength. And, he, and lately it seems to be what he's been doing. Um, one of the things that Ron Rivera said today is that he's as good as advertised and he's not at the point where he's challenging for a starting job, but he is at the point where he certainly warrants a if you're going to put together an active game day roster, I think he should be on there because of, because he's shown that ability where he can play a guard or a center in, um, in a pinch, sorry, a guard in a pinch, but I mean, he's a third round pick. And you know, it's funny because a couple of weeks ago, we wondered on here about, you know, you they drafted a guy in the third round, drafted a guy in the fourth round that if all went well, that they would not play. For Stromberg, you'd still say that because if everybody stays healthy, he's not going to play. However, that rarely happens on the offensive line. The ability to play guard is, is really paramount to what he can contribute this year because, again, it allows him to be active on Sunday, and then if something happens to the game, he can go in there and be a backup. Now, I don't know that they keep him at that position if, you know, because you, you may have another guard who's, on, who's inactive that day that you go in there following week. Maybe not. But, it, but at least he's shown that he can certainly be a contributor if something goes wrong on that offensive line. And that's what you want to see. Because if he was just going to be a center, then, then you have to, excuse me while a bug just flew into my eye. But if he was just going to be a center, then you'd have to say, well, how is he going to, how is he going to help them unless Nick Gates gets hurt? And you don't want to see that. And I think Nick Gates is going to be good for them. And, but now you look at it and say, this is now he's starting to progress into being able to help them this year. And that is a good sign. I think he's a guy, again, I would not say he's threatening for a starting job at this point, but he's a guy that the coach is talking awful lot about when they're in their meeting rooms. And so that, again, that that's a good sign for him and for them. Let's see what else we got here, folks. Oh, and I don't know what this means. So here's what the other part of this, and I speculated on this, speculated on this yesterday, and I wondered after Rivera talked about like, you know, him being able to play both these spots, meaning Stromberg, kind of cleans up some other things. 
I don't know yet that that means that they'd only go with nine offensive linemen. They can still go with 10 because I do think they want, they have a desire to have three centers, three guys who can play center on their roster, especially after what happened last season. So I think they'd be very afraid to expose if they like Tyler Larson, I don't think they're going to expose them to waivers on the chance that they might lose them. And then if something happens again, now you're, you're, you're at a difficult spot at a, at a position where you've had all these problems. So I could see them still keeping 10 there, but maybe they do something else. You know, it could help on game days, but um, I, I still, I, I would kind of lean more toward 10 offensive linemen, but um, what I know is that Stromberg now has, has done a good job. And I don't think it means doom and gloom for, again, for Larson, because again, that was something I wondered, what does it mean for him since they play the same position? And if, and if he's going to be active, okay, you could, cause you could always keep a Nolan Laufenberg on the practice squad, for example, and, or if Larson cleared, you could keep him on the practice squad. So they can both Laufenberg can be a center and a guard. And, you know, so you could keep your guy there, but, I don't know that they're going to want to expose. I don't, I don't know if like the last couple of years have really haunted them so much that they don't want to go through all that again. And, you know, and I mean, if they went through that a third year in a row, that would be unbelievable. You know, we'll see. Unbelievable things have happened here before. So kind of what, after looking at, you know, thinking about Stromberg, let's look at some other rookies. Obviously Emmanuel Forbes is going to be a starter and he's going to be a big contributor. He's going to be a good player for them. He's going to give up. He's going to give up some scores because he likes to take, I want to say take some chances, but he plays aggressive enough. That's how he makes those plays because he puts himself in position to make them. Other teams are going to test him, but regardless, he's, he's, he has shown that he can play. He has shown that he can help them and be a quality, a good starter for them. So, you know, there you go. The other rookies, the other guy that to me has jumped out. Uh, I think, like I said, Stromberg is really kind of because of his, what he showed at guard, you know, just what he can do this year, but it's Chris Rodriguez running back from the sixth round. Had the fumble the other night when it's funny because he usually does a very good job going through the hole and making sure that ball is covered up when, when he's, when he's hit, got getting contact, one of the few times he didn't and, and it cost him. But the thing that you have to really like about him is the power that he runs with. And I think in this running game, I think that suits them well. And, you know, he's always getting a couple extra yards after contact. Antonio Gibson has done a better job. Of, uh, you know, he's gradually gotten better in that area over the last couple of years. And he has talked about having a bigger focus with lowering his shoulder this camp, but it, it's something that Rodriguez naturally does. And I think that makes a difference. And I think it's why he's certainly going to have a role this year. I don't know how much he's, what he's all going to get because they like Brian Robinson, Robinson through the hole has quick feet. He's shown good vision. Uh, then you have Gibson as a third down back. It's quite possible that you use, Rodriguez as your as your backup to Robinson and there's have Gibson as your third down back but a guy who also can play in various packages when you when you want to throw the ball a little bit more or when you want two guys in the field who are a little bit more run pass threats like Gibson and Robinson because I think they'll do that as well but the other thing that's really I think they've been very pleased about with Rodriguez is that he catches the ball well so I think he's a guy like I said I think he's been a good I think he looks like he's going to be a good pick and it's you know, you always guys can always look good in camp, right? And then they don't do anything, especially at that position, because it's really hard to tell. But I also remember I go back, you remember a guy like Keith Marshall, who several years ago was a lower round pick, and he had a lot of speed, but he really didn't look like a running back. Now he had a decent first preseason game because that speed, but he I don't you don't know what kind of role he would have had. You know, he didn't I think Rodriguez is and my point is like he was a low round pick. Rodriguez looks better and further ahead than where Marshall was. Marshall was a speed guy. And again, if he hadn't torn his ACL, maybe would have seen something more from him. But the point is, I think to this point in camp, Rodriguez looks like, you know, he's not just a guy who looks good because they're in camp and you're not hitting. He's a guy who looks good because the way he runs, the way he lowers his shoulder, the way he gets extra yards and the way he can catch the ball to play more in that role. You also have to learn the protections, but he's a very physical guy. And I think that helps him. <clears throat> All right. So some other, you know, it's funny because looking at him, they've had some success with the low round picks. So let's go over some of them. 2020 Cam Curl, seventh round. They also drafted Kalik Hudson and James Ruth Williams in the seventh round. If nothing else, they're, they're key backups, special teams guys. Um, they also in, in, in 2020, you also had um, 
I mean, obviously that was Chase Young and Antonio Gibson were at the top end of the draft and Sadiq Charles, but those are the low round picks. 21, Derek Forrest, fifth round, projected as a starter right now, and he's really progressed. He's a guy going into camp that you they I think they wondered where was he at exactly. I think they I think the feeling in the offseason was that maybe Percy Butler was going to ascend to that, like the role, like as the number two safety, you know, with Cam Curl. But Force Force is Force is in there all the time for a reason. And I think he's continued to progress. So another good pick in the lower rounds, 2022, Sam Howell in the fifth round. I mean, whether or not you think he's going to be a great starter or not, the guy can, the guy will, will show that he can play in this league and it's a fifth round pick. That's really good. So if he's just a quality starter or, you know, something else, that, that's a really good pick in the fifth round to get a quarterback who can play in this league. It's a really good pick. You also got John Bates in the fourth round that year. Another another solid pick, good run blocker, pass catcher, okay, but a good run blocker. And it's fun to watch him, fun if you like watching tight ends block, but at the line of scrimmage because like Cole Turner does a nice job blocking in the move. At the line of scrimmage, I think he still needs some work there, but that's where Bates can really help them. And you saw a difference with him in the run game last year. You get guys like Bates and Alex Arma as a fullback in the run game, now you have two extra blockers to help that line, and it, it can allow his enemy to do a few more things. So in 2021, excuse me, um, well, I think I went, I already went over 2021. You got Derek Forrest. So, and then this year, of course, you know, you got, you got Rodriguez, and then you have Andre Jones and KJ Henry. Of those two, they're different players. So it's hard to say, like, Jones is flash more, but Henry plays with some power. I think that's going to help him. But those are intriguing picks. And listen, you don't have to become a – if you get a guy who's a key contributor in the low rounds, you've done really well. And because, like, every draft you go into it, like the what, what NFL folks will say is, like, you want to get guys who can maybe be future starters or you want two or three starters, you want two or three guys who contribute to winning. And I think guys like that can. Rodriguez, I think, can do that. And I think one or two of the Jones or Henry will be able to do that now. Right now, you'd say Jones because he's flashed more. But I think as they progress, we'll be curious to see where it goes. Will either one ever be starters? Well, they don't necessarily have to be. But what here's another key. like They have four defensive end free agents next year, including the backups, Smith-Williams and Casey Tuhill. Let's say both make it. Well, you're not going to be able to resign all those guys because it's just going to be, you don't, you know, you're going to have to sign, resign Montez Sweat. Maybe, maybe franchise tag Chase Young or maybe resign him. So that's a lot of money there. You want some younger and experienced backups who can develop into, into good backups. I think that's what they potentially have there where you may have one, like Jones might be more of the, of the um, Casey Tuhill role and KJ Henry might be more of the uh, Smith Williams role. But the one, one of the things they like, and Jack Del Rio talked about this in college, you know, Jones played a lot of two point from the two point stance. And whereas now he's obviously got to play a three point stance. But I think that length and is just his athleticism has really helped him in that regard. As far as the other rookies this year, you know, Quan Martin and I think his future, I mean, he's going to clearly, I think he, I mean, he's going to help them just a matter of what role is he going to help him. And then at what point does he become a more of a player than I, what he is projected to be right now? Because right now it's hard to see like how much, how much time is he really going to get? given what they have in the secondary, you have three corners. Well, they can always put him in the slot, but I think that may, you know, you have Benjamin St. Juice, you put in the slot with Forbes and Fuller on the outside. But if something happens to Fuller and you need a guy in there, you have Quan Martin who can go in there or you have Danny Johnson. But Quan Martin too, I'll be curious to see what, how does he do at safety? And they are putting a lot on his plate. So sometimes when you see him in a game, there's a lot that he's had to digest and process more than than a lot of other players and you see some of those mistakes get made in games like we saw the other night and and they as they talked about and i told you yesterday it's, it was really a, there some of those are just simple communication mistakes but the one thing del rio said that he likes about Quan martin is that he doesn't make the same mistake twice and i told you before i think he's a smart player but it still remains to be seen how big a role will he have from scrimmage i think he'll be a, a, a key part of special teams but from scrimmage and that'll just depend on the package. It'll depend on the team they're playing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, that's all from me. I told you I'd have an interview with, with Andre Jones. So here you go. Here's my conversation with Washington undrafted free agent defensive end, Andre Jones. The Adventure Park is ziplining through the trees. 
It's climbing from platform to platform. It's even an axe throwing competition with your friends. But what the adventure park really is, is opportunity. Reconnecting with friends and family, accomplishing a challenge, and making lasting memories. So book your visit today and choose your own adventure. John Carn with yeah. ESPN. But nice to meet you. Man. Yes, Just curious how you feel things have been going for you so far. Uh, I would say they've been going well. They can always be better. Like, you know, because I've always been hard on myself. I'm always hard on myself. I want to be better. So, like, you know, like, I do something good. It's just like the next thing. But, uh, I need to work on that too. Just enjoy what I do good too. Sometimes, you know. What is it like the other night? What did you feel like you were able to show the other night? What is it that you say? I need to get better here. Uh, I know. The, I know the main thing right now is just playing fast and being consistent. Like you know, and, uh, I, I think I feel like as a rookie, you do a whole lot of thinking right now. And you know, the more you, and I think that's that's normal. And the more you just keep working, keep working, and get, getting better. Everything's gonna be all right. And what, what, is there something you took away from that game? Where it's like, I, like I like this, but I like this is something that like, let's just tweak this. Uh, for me, for my height, uh, hand placement, pad level. Okay. You know, uh, I, the motor's there. Everything else is there. You know, uh, for my height, just, just keep working on that pad level and hand placement. Then get being consistent on that too. And there were like. How when you, do you how much do you pay attention like oh they're giving me reps against this group they're giving me reps against this group they're, you keep uh, kind, of, kind of climbing up. Uh, I really I really um when it first happened I was like I was excited it makes me excited but as of right now I don't want to like get carried away with that I want to just like I'm getting reps I'm getting the opportunity that's how I look at it like and, like you know I'm getting the practice I'm getting to get better like you know so I don't really kind of feed into that. I like the dream chaser tattoo. What's yeah. the story behind? Uh, I got that when I was like in 19th grade. Uh, wait, wait, like one wait. of my favorite, my favorite one artists is like Me Mill, and like his uh, his label is called Dream Chasers. And like and, you know, coming from coming from like a lot of people gonna chase their dreams, but they ain't never like get to like you know you know like achieve it. So like I'm one of the only ones like that got to like you know achieve my dream like you know. So it's it's it's, it's really it's really deep. We're going. It's like I, I can write a book on it. Really? Yes. Wait, like, wait, like, what else? What else behind that? Like, is it you know? It's, why? A, it's like a lot of people that like they get live, they live their dreams through me. Like a lot of people that's in my corner, they get to live their dreams through me. They, they're happy to see I'm doing it, so they get to, uh, <laughs> they get they, they get like, they happy this they happy for me. Just feel like that. And when you when you like, what do you feel a like, pressure, a burden, or what? How, what is that like to when you know that like that a lot of people mm-hmm. are kind of living like that? Or is it just? Uh, a, or is it a? Is it just a blessed feeling? It's a blessed feeling. I feel like I feel like it, um, I feel like pressure is a privilege. Like, okay. You know, yeah. so I, I feel like that. Like you know, be able to do something, and everybody look up to you. I feel like that's a privilege. Like you know, and I don't I don't take that lightly. As a, as a pass rusher, where do you think your your main strengths are? Oh, uh, just getting out the ball fast and using my length. And, you know, and uh, I think that's my two best things right there. And playing with power, just being just just being just having that motor. Like, you know? With the length, because I notice that sometimes like you're able to get into them and kind of keep their hands. Is it more keeping their hands off you? Where does the length really help you most? I feel like in pass rush, you got to use your hands. Right. Like, you know, I'm learning a whole lot more than what I knew in college. So, like, it's a process right now. Like I said, like doing a lot of thinking, a lot of learning. And I'm learning more about myself right now. So, uh, I would say, like, you know, using my length to uh, don't let them get at me. You know? So is it more just keeping their hands off you? In other words, yeah, or? trying to win. I'm trying to win. Right, right, yeah, yeah trying to win, win. But like that, that helps you win. Yeah, yeah, it helps, yeah. It helps in the run too. Like we don't sure. get too carried away with the, with the uh, with the, um, passion. Right. right. You know, we gotta stop the runs. You know. This. Well, how much of that for you coming here? Like how much? You know, I've, you know, I've played this for a while, so you mm-hmm. know that it's important. But is it even a bigger deal than you realize when you get here, or is it like as far as like, hey, you got to be able to do everything? Uh. I would say it's a bigger deal because I know I knew in college I came from a good school and I had well good coaching mm-hmm. and don't get even you know, even better coaching in the league is is like it's ten times different a hundred times different like you know uh, I still make it a big deal like just trying to be uh, the whole package be be everything I could be and going back to the dream test because I just think that's fantastic like, how much do you hear from people about you know where you're at and how much it means to them like. You know, do you hear a lot from people like that when you go back? Is it, what's it like? Uh, to my going back home. Whenever you, whether you're back home or whether they text you or whatever. Uh, what's it like? 
it just it feels good. Like a lot of people like happy for me. You know what I'm saying? If it, what is real or fake is, like, you know, like I'm doing something like a lot of people can't do. Like, they don't get to do. Like you know, a lot of people wish to get to do. Like I said, I can't take it for granted. Can't take it lightly. So uh, I know, like seeing all that, like seeing all that. Sometimes I don't try to tune in up because, like, I got. You know, you spend so much time, you spend a lot of time looking at that, then you get lost with your feet are. So, like, you know, every once in a while I get to look, like, okay, you know, feel good. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Good luck. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Andre for spending a few minutes with me, and thanks to you, as always, for listening. I'll be back on Friday afternoon getting you ready for the set final preseason game Saturday night. So I'll talk to you next time.